let me show you how to use hugging face models on SageMaker. In this example, we're going to build a movie review classification model. Okay, so starting from a pre trained model, we're going to fine tune it on a movie review data set, which is labeled with a positive and negative reviews. So positive reviews are labeled with a one, negative reviews are labeled with a zero. Okay, so we're going to fine tune the model on SageMaker and uh, then we're going to grab that model, uh, copy it to our local machine and we're going to predict with it. Okay, so first of all, of course, uh, we need to install the Transformers library and the datasets library. I also recommend upgrading uh, your uh, PyTorch and uh, TensorFlow versions. Um, as you know, transformers tend to require <laughs> up-to-date versions. Um, you will also need the latest SageMaker SDK. Here I'm using a, a beta environment, so I'm installing from a local version of the SDK, but uh, once this is uh, generally available, just make sure you upgrade your SageMaker SDK to the latest version, okay? Then we just grab a bucket and a roll, as usual in SageMaker. And the first step will be to download the dataset. Okay, so um, this is an IMDB dataset with uh, tw uh, 25 uh, movie reviews for training, 25 movie reviews for validation. Okay, so we just download that using one of the uh, APIs from the dataset library, and you see how simple that is, right? And we have those two data sets here. So we can look at maybe the first training example. So uh, we have the label, right? With a one telling us this is a positive review. And then of course we have the, the actual review, right? So pretty simple data set. But of course, um, you know, it would be too easy if we could feed this data directly to the model. We need to, uh, convert it to a format that the model understands, okay? So what model are we going to use, by the way? We're going to use uh, a BERT variant called Distilled BERT that has been already trained on a large corpus of English texts, okay? And so the first step will be to grab the tokenizer that was uh, learned during that initial training, okay? And the tokenizer is Pretty much what the name says, it's going to replace words with actual tokens, so numerical IDs that can be used by the model, right? So we download the existing tokenizer and then we tokenize uh, the training set and the validation set, okay? And so now this is what the, ex the first sample looks like. Uh, we can see the tokens here actually, right? Uh, you can see the text here, but this is the token uh, form, okay? So each word and each uh, punctuation sign, etc., has been replaced with a token. And we also see a mask. Uh, one means, uh, yes, you need to take this word into account and zero says, don't take this word into account. Depending on the NLP tasks that you're working with, you may want to mask or, or not some words. Here, we're not masking anything, okay? And we see a bunch of zeros because we're padding to the maximum length of, uh, of the sequence that the model can work with, okay? So next we rename the label column to labels, which is what the, the model actually expects, okay? So nothing complicated here. And then we upload the data set to S3, right? SageMaker business as usual, training data uh, mostly lives in S3, unless you really need EFS or FSX, but here S3 will do. And uh, we can use this very handy API in the datasets library uh, to uh, upload directly to an S3 prefix, okay? And so now we have our data in S3. So this is our training script. And uh, of course, it's going to use script mode. So we pass, command, uh, we pass hyperparameters and parameters in general as command line arguments, we read the location of the training set and, and so on as environment variables. Okay, so this is pretty much what you need to add to interface your code with uh, SageMaker. And then the rest is, uh, is vanilla uh, hugging face code. Okay, 
So we download the pre-trained model. Okay, so we download that distilled bird version and we set training arguments, uh, epochs, batch size, and so on, learning rate. And uh, these are again, hugging face APIs, training arguments, and then trainer to configure the training job, passing the data sets, and then we train. Okay, then we evaluate on the test set. And finally, uh, we save the model. Okay, uh, because if, of course, we want to get the, the tune model for testing. Okay. Um, and the rest is really, again, SageMaker business as usual. We define hyperparameters. Uh, we make sure to use the proper container uh, for hugging face. And we use that new hugging face estimator, passing the training script and training on a GPU instance here for uh, one epoch. Okay. Then we call train. And well, it's going to train for a little while. And the model is saved in S3. Okay, so um, we can easily retrieve it. Okay, we know the S3 location, so we can copy from there, uh, extract the model. Uh, so we see the actual model, the training arguments, and the model configuration. And then this time locally using the um, Hugging Face API, we can uh, just load the model. Okay, and you can see we have a distilled BERT model here. Right, which is really uh, BERT with a classifier at the end, okay, uh, outputting two probabilities, right? So, uh, yes or no, is this a positive review? And then, of course, we can try it, right? So, here I'm not going to take sides. If you think The Phantom Menace was uh, a really bad movie, whoops, it's a typo here, <laughs> uh, then you could predict that. Let's try. Okay, so first, of course, we need to tokenize this sample and we can forward it through the model. We get uh, logits, right? And applying the softmax function, we're going to get uh, probabilities between zero and one. And here the top probability is index zero. So this is a negative review. Now, if you think uh, Jar Jar rocks, then obviously um, the highest probability is uh, index one, right? And so that's how you use hugging face models. So the last thing I want to show you really quickly is the same example using distributed training, right? And here we can use uh, the data parallelism library that was launched at reInvent. Okay, and you can see this time I'm training on two very large P3 instances. And the only thing I have to do is add this parameter to the estimator, right? Zero change to my code, to my training script. Just add this parameter. And now training again, okay, I can see I am training on those two instances. Okay, so if you have super large training jobs um, and you want to fine tune um, hugging face models, this is how you do it, right? Just enable data parallelism. It's as easy as this. All right. Well, this is pretty much what I wanted to show you today. Hope that was useful and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.